Welcome to DIY RVing Home, Camper's Life. My name's Greg. Today I'm starting to work on mounting my board with all my components for my RV electrical system upgrade. Now right in here, there's a piece of tape. And that's where all my wires are planned to be routed. And I've done some thinking and how I want to do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take and cut a notch out of this and then on the back side on the wall here I'm going to cut a notch in the wall and that will allow me to run my wires up through this spot right here that is in between the front cap and the wall basement. And you can see the wires that I've got that I've got to run there, plus my battery wires. So all that will be running up right through this area right here. And I got to, I'll have to repair this tape area or this tore out area that tore over time. And I just found it, so we'll get that fixed too. But so we're gonna route all our wires in through that spot right there. So the first thing I need to do is identify where I want my notch out. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of well actually let's change that because this is these are the two main wires coming down that I'm dealing with so I'm going to go right there and then right there. that I'll pull it out make my notch in this and then I'll bring that back up put it in place and mark out the back wall so then I can uh, match it up so give me a second I'll come back once I get that done and basically I'm going to be using a Forstner bit to start it and then I'll finish it off with uh, my jigsaw all right got it back in place Got a position where I want it. Here's those lines that I initially scratched out right there. So I'm going to come in just like that. Now I can move this out of the way. And actually, what I can do also is come in, I can actually go like this. Just take. There's a couple uh, starts. Get this out of the way, finish it up. One, two, think of that, cut that. There she is, right like that. One uh, additional thing I'll do when I, uh, after everything's mounted and everything's run, is I will come up with a kind of a weather seal system for that. So I just plug it off, even though I'm gonna repair that tape down below. So get some of this cleaned up real quick and we'll start uh, working on getting stuff put in place. I wanna get that board mounted solid so it doesn't go anywhere and we can start running some wires. All right, I was able to come in and feel actually one of the studs going up and down. It's about two inches in. I've got a mark two inches and then I'm scratched line on this side. That means that that's where the end of the stud is. So I would need to drill, put screws on this side. And then I'll come up here and do the same thing. So we're about, oh, 30 inches. So roughly, you can't see it. So roughly 30 inches. So I'm, I've got another uh, mark right there. That way I can put, put, and by running the tape 
in that direction. It appears that they're on 16 inch on centers. So I've got a mark further down on 16 and then I can go back up and uh, put another screw up there and then go down further. So let me pull this board over, get it in place and then we'll get a couple screws in it. That sunk in really good, so that means that I did grab on and hit that stud. Hopefully you saw that. We'll come up here. Do the same thing. So right about there. Feels good. Move down and uh, put a couple more in. See if I can't get enough for four more. Okay. Right about there is where it shows that I got another stud. That felt good. Now, I really don't know if I'm gonna be able to get one up there. So, let's just come down here, see what we got. I'm gonna go ahead and just go down here and try to hit them right in this area. Oh, hopefully you see what I'm doing. There we go. Hopefully you've seen it. If not, well, that felt good. Okay, she's not going anywhere. I'm happy with that. So, Let's go and uh, start moving some wires, eh? This is the main 110 going back to the transfer switch, then to the breaker panel for the uh, trailer. So this is going to the inverter. Uh, I've got uh, battery monitor wire and the uh, relay or the switch for the inverter right here. I'm going to be running those through these holes right here. Um, I will be removing this one right here. Uh, that one is going to go inside uh, to a new breaker that I've got in place. So I'm going to move some of that around. And today I'm also working on uh, doing the battery. I'm going to be removing the old wires. And I've got new cables that I've made up. They're going to go in place uh, that way we can handle the, the uh, amperage for the inverter so time to get real time to start moving some stuff around also um, like right here when i do go to put uh, the wires through the hole i've got some grommet material so i can protect it as it's going through i don't like it just going through just kind of rubbing so i'll be back in a few with uh, an update all right, removed the one battery from the side. Got everything disconnected. Uh, you can see all the wiring that uh, I've got to move around. That is the main wire that's going back to the DC distribution panel. So that will be going to the inside of the trailer. And then we've got to figure out what the rest of these uh, wires are gonna go to. 
Um, I've got two 30 amp breakers set up inside to take care of that. So as soon as I get all that stuff disconnected, I'll bring you back. All right, back. Now, this is also a reminder for me, take pictures when you're uh, moving wires, especially jumble messes like this. So let's get rid of that garbage. That was right there. That wire, which is black, was on a positive. So put a piece of red tape on it. Signify that it is a positive. These two wires, along with the main wire running to the distribution panel, was on this breaker right here. This went to the battery. That one was not being used anymore. It was actually something I cut, got out. Excuse me, that's something I cut out of the way earlier. I just couldn't get uh, the screw out at the time because um, I did relocate my ground, which is right there. So that comes off also. Okay, so that is how it was laid out. Now we're gonna start pulling some of these wires back uh, and uh, get them routed inside the basement so we can attach them. All right, so I've got uh, a couple of these wires hooked together. Um, I've actually taken the old one of the old battery wires and ran it through the hole, so it's down there, and I've got a string on it. So I'll pull that. We'll pull these through. We'll get this rerun. We'll get some of the other battery cables run along with this, and we'll start just pulling up some at uh, a little bit at a time. Now I've got all the wires that ran from the back to the front, run up in the wire loom, run up and then ran to inside the trailer. I've got some more wires. Uh, this is the power jack. I've got this one right here, which I'm pretty sure um, is gonna be for the brake controller. So I'll have to uh, extend that wire, get that in there, plus run the battery cables in. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish up today before it starts raining by buttoning up the belly pan, getting that put back in place. So that's as far as I'm going today uh, with it. I'll come back to it next week uh, when the weather's a little bit better and uh, keep going. All right, it's a new day. Uh, this time I'm climbing inside the basement so I can go ahead and uh, start attaching the main cables to the board that I installed. Um, I've already uh, showed this in prior videos, so I'm just speeding through on uh, crimping and connecting those lugs onto those wires. So this purple wire that i am got my probe into, I'm doing a continuity test on so I can know exactly what it is, so I can label it. Um, it went to one of the 30 amp resettable breakers that were on the front of the trailer. Um, I've since cut those off and they're on the board here. So I've taken, I've probed it and I've got it going to my multimeter and I've got it set on continuity so I can check that I'll come out and for my Furion, for the Furion solar charger um, went ahead and tested and there it is so that purple wire comes up to the charger so we know that's good I'll go ahead and uh, get that purple one and I'll put it to one of the 30 amp resettable breakers I have over there and label it along with I haven't got it moved yet, but I do have some wire for that. And that'll be this wire right here it needs to be run inside and put onto that along with this wire right here. So those three wires are actually gonna go to uh, one of these two resettable breakers right here. This wire right here will go to the other one. And as you can see, I got some tape right here. I actually had to extend it. I had to use, I was, what, eight inches short of the original stuff. I'm not gonna, I wasn't gonna rerun a whole new line to the back of the trailer just for eight inches. So I just got a coupler, look like this, and crimp that in a bunch of butt connector. And then I'll go ahead and I'll probably put it like to this one or something, but, Onwards and upwards, as you saw, I did go ahead and get the uh, 
two mains in connected uh, put together battery out here is still disconnected it's just got some of the wires hooked up to it um, just for positioning but there's no power to it the trailer still is plugged in right now so that's why this one is taped over because there's still power to that one but when I get ready to wire that in I'll go ahead and uh, disconnect power it's getting closer I'll come back to you in a little bit all right the second wire that I was talking about that I pulled in that I had to extend to that went up to this 30 amp resettable breaker um, figured out what it was went ahead and uh, again put my probe on it got my meter set for continuity and we're gonna come out and try to do this all one-handed but here's my trailer plug See if you hear that. There you go. Oh well. There we go. So that is the 12 volt from the truck. Uh, so it'll charge while you're going down the road. So that is from the vehicle charging. So now I've got that one labeled as, or now I got that one um, identified. Uh, charging from vehicle solar and then this last one that I was talking about right here as you see I've already moved the battery and stuff that one right there that is for my breakaway switch for the trailer lockup so I'll get that wired in we'll get everything hooked up bring you back when I'm further along So I'm getting ready to attach my main cable going back to the AC breaker side of our distribution panel in the back and I'm going to use some uh, ring ends for that. You can see I've already got the cover removed and the ring end will not fit in between the distribution block here so what I did was I went ahead and I ground down the size just a little bit and make sure they fit looks like I'll have to grind that one down just a little bit more so I just need to go touch this one up shave the edge just off just a little bit um, that way it'll fit in there. I like using uh, ring ends better than just trying to hook the wire in there and uh, tighten it up. So come back in a few when I'm ready to start uh, getting everything attached and get that put back together. I'm going to be hooking up the 
inverter to the cord in action. All right, I'm gonna be hooking up the cord that goes to the breaker panel in the back of the trailer to my inverter. And one thing I noticed is that the ring in terminals that I'm going to be using right here actually won't fit the work and action. All right, I'm going to be and action. It's time to hook up the AC cable going back to the distribution panel, breaker panel in the trailer to the inverter. I'm gonna be doing that with some ring and terminals. And one thing I noticed is that this block right here is a little narrow for my ring and terminals. So I had to go and just uh, set it on a grinder just a little bit just to uh, narrow the two sides up just enough to it fits on there. I don't wanna just took a wire back there and screw it on. So this is how I'm gonna do it. And of course we got a neutral ground and load so black green and white that's how we're going to hook it up i'm going to set you down and start getting this wire hook cut Actually, think I'm gonna take I'm gonna go ahead and cut the sheath all right about here and expose this <laughs> so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, cut my cable to length and then I'm remove some of the outer sheathing to expose the three wires inside start getting those ready and uh, I'll go ahead and figure out how long I want them cut them and uh, go ahead and get the ring in terminals on so I can install it to the inverter So I've got the wires hooked up to the inverter. I've got the remote hooked up. Now unfortunately, with pulling the wires through and everything like that, that little tap did break on this. So I'm gonna have to uh, use a little bit of a, maybe a dab of silicone just to keep it in place, but yet allow it to be able to come out. And then I'll also add some kind of retainer or something also but it's gonna go over hook up the 12 volt wire that goes back to the distribution panel in the back um, then I'm gonna go ahead and hook the batteries up yeah I know it looks still a mess over here a little bit um, got some stuff placed up a little bit but what I'm doing now is I'm just going ahead and I want to get everything working, tested, and make sure that it's going to work properly. And once I know it works properly, then I will make it beautiful, clean it up. So, this is the final uh, hookup before getting the batteries hooked up. So, like I said, I got to disconnect the trailer um, from our shoreline. Um, so there's no back feed of power. I've got the uh, solar disconnected and Batteries are not hooked up right this second so It'll be This the batteries and we'll test it This is to the shunt I'll go ahead and plug it in for a temporary, but uh, there we go. Temporarily plugged in just to make sure it is actually working. But I'm going to have to program it, let it know where uh, the batteries are full. And I know they're not completely full. 
I need to let them charge for a little bit before I do that. I also need to tighten up a couple more bolts. So I'll go through and I'll spot check everything before I actually power everything back up. So be back with you in a bit. All right, there is one final thing. This was live uh, when, because uh, it's coming from the distribution panel forward. So with the charger uh, supplying 12 volts to it, that's why I hadn't messed with it because I didn't want to charge or make any of this live until I was ready. But before we do that too, we want to make sure that there is no power right now to it. And survey says, I'm seeing no power. Let me drop you down. We're going between positive and negative. There's no power. So we're good. Good to start working on that and getting that hooked up. And that's going right there. Okay, time to start uh, getting the battery back in place. So, I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna go ahead and get the box back in place, get it screwed back down, uh, get the battery on. I'll bring you back when I start connecting up the wires. Now we are at that point where it's time to hook the battery up. Um, since I've got this is my catastrophic main fuse coming over and hitting these two breakers right here. I'm gonna go ahead and trip both of these. And the only thing that will be live is from here back to the battery. Again, I've got the shoreline unplugged. Right back over there. We've got the batteries right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up. And All right, so we're ready to start hooking up the two batteries. I got a crescent here. Now, anytime I'm dealing with batteries, uh, take off my ring, put it away. Um, don't want to accidentally cross. That would not be good. So let's go ahead and start and we're gonna hook up our positive first and then we'll do our negatives at the very last. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way for a second. Now, when you're hooking up uh, batteries, you always want to hook up that positive side first. That way, if you accidentally do touch the metal uh, with uh, the wrench or anything like that, you're not going to cause a short circuit because the circuit is not complete. If you were to do the negative first and then the positive, you'd have a complete circuit and uh, you could actually cause some quite a bit of damage and or some injury if you do that. So always, always, do your positive first and your negative second when hooking up. When disconnecting, take your negative off first, then your positive. Okay, so batteries are hooked up. Make sure we got nothing going to be a problem. Everything looks good. We'll tie those up. We'll get all that pleased up later on. And... We've got lights on. There's our fan and lights. So that's saying that our we've got power to our panel back here, which is working awesome. We still have our uh, solar tripped right there, so we're not pulling solar. Okay, so now. Let's go ahead and trip, or let's do this first. Let's go and make sure that that uh, switch is off for our inverter. All right, 
the inverter's turned off. We're not dealing with the battery monitor just yet. So now, time, let's go ahead and flip on the breaker for the inverter. Breaker's on. Come back around. We're gonna go inside and we're gonna actually turn the breaker on or the inverter on, test it. Okay, and here we go. We've got power, no fault, and I just heard the microwave kick on. So inverter is on. Go ahead and shut it off. And power went off. Whew. Let's go ahead and hook back up the trailer to our shoreline. There's that now. This should have like a 10, 15 second delay because it also is for the generator um, on the transfer switch. So we get in here, we actually should be able to hear the, oh, she's on. Took longer than I thought. <laughs> All right. So last thing I got to do is, uh, do the program on this, but I want to go ahead and let my uh, uh, batteries charge up because I've had them unplugged for about a week. So uh, make sure they're topped off so when I do program it, it's programmed properly. Well, it's installed right there. Got it pleased up. My wires run. You can see like right here, I've got some descriptions on the different wires, what they do. Truck charging, solar plug. Uh, this is the emergency brake. Uh, so it's the breakaway switch. This is 12 volt distribution. So this goes back to the back of the trailer. I've got my auxiliary fuse block. And right now I have the battery monitor shunt uh, powered and also the trailer tongue jack powered. The other two on the top, those are for uh, some USBs that I'll be installing um, real shortly um, to the front of the trailer one on either side um, I haven't done that quite yet and as you can see the wires are pleased up zip tied attached to the board everything's long we've got everything powered up so let's go ahead and take a quick walk inside now as of this time what I'm going to do is Go ahead, because I've had the battery charging for a little bit since I uh, uh, got everything hooked up. Wanted to make sure it was completely full, so let me go ahead and disconnect that. So I've got this disconnected. Now let's go ahead, go inside, and disconnect the uh, solar on the roof. That way we don't have anything coming into the trailer. All right, there's the battery monitor. Let's go ahead and make sure that we... Uh, Turn the solar panel off. That way we're not charging, but yet uh, the battery should be full. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. It's not set for um, what batteries I have yet. So we're gonna press the amp, amp hour, get it to the AH. We're gonna press and hold it for three seconds. It defaults showing 100 amp hour. I've got two batteries that are 62 amp hour, so I've got 120, we're just gonna go 120 amp hour worth of batteries. Hit set. Now, this is set for 120 amp hours. Let's try it, one, two, three. It's set for 120. 
Now we need to tell this that the battery is full. So we're going to go over to the percentage. And it shows it's only at 0.1%. We're going to press and hold it for three seconds. Now it says it's at 100. So now we're at 100% on the batteries. That's how many amps we are drawing, which is 0.25. 119.9 amp hours. Our volt is at 13.6. Let's go ahead and uh, kick on our inverter. And power came on to the microwave, indicating it's on. We're showing we are pulling one amp right now. Let's turn the lights on. Shows that we're pulling. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and turn the inverter off. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. Um, project's about 95% done. I've got some tidying up to do, putting the belly pan on, some covers. I'm not going to bring you along on that. Um, but I do have that uh, wall that I need to put up in the basement uh, to protect the equipment. I'll probably do a video on that. Along with doing some product reviews on the different items, whether they're like the Renergy uh, inverter, the QWork uh, battery monitor, um, the Go Power transfer switch, etc. Um, I'll do some uh, review videos on those and also the tools that uh, I used in this project. So look for those. If you guys uh, stuck it out, I appreciate it. Uh, if you like the video, click the like button. Share it and subscribe. And until the next one, you guys have an awesome day.